Alright guys, as I stated in my last uh, intro video on the uh, rail system, I want to just uh, start breaking the system down for you guys into individual parts so I can explain it better in a series of videos. Um, so I thought the first thing I'd start with is the main basic component of the system and that's the rails. Um, I'm not even really going to do an update video on the plants at the moment. I just want to talk about the system a little bit. Um, so basically, there's six rails in this system. Each rail is a 5x5 five five, uh, vinyl fence post with the vinyl caps on the ends. The uh, posts are set five apart. So basically I just used the cap in between the post and that's how I staged how far apart they are. Uh, in the rails they have four inch netty cups. The uh, net cups were I believe actually three and three quarter, 3.75's. So they were drilled out and they were staggered. So what I mean by that is this first rail there's seven plant sites that go down the rail. The next rail is six plant sites. As you can see the plants, let me come from the end, the plants are staggered rail to rail to rail. They stagger all the way down just to try to give them spacing around the plants. Each one is a foot to foot in all directions. As you notice there's a lot of room on the ends. You might have been able to put one more plant here. I wasn't real concerned because I wanted to keep them in as close to the lighting as possible. But anyways, back to the rails. So here's the original rail. If you remember from my first video ever, it's just one single rail in the video. I had quarter inch tubing that came across here with the uh, sprinkler heads down in and it snaked the quarter inch. You could see the little cover ups that cover the holes all the way down. What I found that that was good for like a rail, but after so many, there wasn't enough pressure in that. So I changed over to threading, and I'll take the uh, end off here in a minute, threading the end cap, or I'm sorry, threading a half inch solid PVC pipe and putting the hedge directly into that and then running half inch all the way up, which creates plenty of pressure. All the heads work and run great. So back to the rail, five by five post, two end caps. A lot of guys on the ends, or a lot of manufacturers, will glue the ends in place, which is fine. I wanted a system that was easily broke down, easy to clean, you know, take apart, get to all the intricate parts real easy. So first problem was coming up with a way to deal with the ends. So what I came up with is this little T-piece. This is a nylon wing nut that goes to a nylon bolt that I drilled the center of the, the cap. Now you might see, drip it, because I just took the pressure off because the system is running right now. You may see a little bit of fluid come out of this end cap here. And if you look, there's a little plumber's fitting right there. That's actually a, a pipe gasket. You can get that in Lowe's in the section. It's much bigger than that, but I cut it down to fit. You can actually see the indentation from the pipe at the end. You can see the indentation around the edge of it. And that's from the end of the cap here. So the first goal was I wanted to be able to open this up so I can get to the roots, see the roots, see the sprinklers if they're running, and mainly once I break the system down for a new crop, I can thoroughly open this up and clean it out no problem. So the first thing was designing a T-piece that I could pull even pressure for the gasket. So what I came up with is basically you got a couple electrical fittings here, this is all half inch, to a T to a cap that I drilled and put in a, a nylon nut with a nylon bolt and then it comes out to the uh, male side that there's an o-ring tightens up this just screws and tightens up by hand to the female side I had to cut these female pieces shorter to get that dimension right to fit so once it's together this female male goes on with the o-ring which is just a normal uh, o-ring from a uh, faucet store I got like a pack of 20 of them for a couple bucks put that in there fits right in there. I drilled it out three inches back. Fits in, drilled it out. You tighten that up, center this up. See it all moves because it all comes apart real easily. Tighten that up and then you have, you can see I'm dripping, dripping out of the end. So you can see these caps do work because the system's running. Tighten that up and then you have the cap fits on there watertight. And it makes a great access point to get in and check your roots. You can see how the roots are doing in there to check that the sprinkler heads are doing well, which I can see all the heads all the way down. You may not be able to on camera, but that's the end cap. And at the time when I had these end caps completed, 
I said, well, you know, you got these posts that arrive for no particular reason. That would be a great place to tie in for plant supports. And it ties rail to rail, gives the other rail stability once the plants start getting heavy. So it, that's how this developed. I'll get into the plant supports another time. But this is the end cap. On the inside, you have a half inch pipe, eight foot long rail, comes to a cap on the end here. The sprinkler heads, on the end you see this blue one, that's a 90, because I didn't want it blowing out at the end here when I was trying to look in. The rest of them, if you can see the orange ones in there, those are 180 sprinklers. They are located directly in between these pots. So basically where you see this tape is a head. There's a head here, there would be a head here, head in between. So they're exactly centered between every neck cup all the way down including to the end. So basically you have a sprinkler head on each side of center to the cups which as you can see sprays up nicely on the roots and the roots seem to love it you know. So now let me get this cap back on and we'll go to the other end of this rail so you can see how much that that actually does waterproof and keep this all sealed up and I tell you what it's a couple extra bucks to do it this way and a little more time but I'm always constantly looking in here seeing how the roots look seeing if the heads are clean and running one of the biggest problem with aeroponics is guys complain the heads get clogged up which I do have a filter on the pump but I can physically look in there and see how my heads are doing now if there's a problem none of that's glued in place in there that head or I'm sorry that line that line that runs down is basically by pressure against this way because I have caps glued in the in the uh, rail to hold that line to the left side that goes to the other end and is just put together by pressure I could pull straight out this whole eight foot section and clean them heads on every rail if I needed to individually and I could do that individually because I had the foresight if you come to the front of the rail system I had the foresight to put each rail on its own valve so I could shut down rail number one and after this connection right here, the next connection that comes in, which I got this high for a reason. Number one, I didn't want it down low where the water, because at this end the water does build up slightly as the rail gets full till it drains. It does drain all the way down, but I have a series of small holes on the adapter here above. But anyways, I wanted this high so it prevent a leak point. And once this penetrates, it hits a 90 that goes down to another 90 that goes down where you see the uh, sprinkler heads. This 90 is not glued. None of this inside is glued. If I pulled right now on this, I would take this pipe right out of the 90. So very easily, I pull this, that 90 is right there, I could pull that out for cleaning. So this is what I wanted to design with the system, was an easy maintenance. If there is a problem, I can expose the problem individually, isolate it to whatever rail, and you know try to fix it. So more on the rail. This end we have a cap just like the other. The only difference here is we have a penetration here. I'm not going to open this end up, especially when this is running because you'll see a flood come out of here. But this, uh, this goes to a 90 that goes down to another 90 as I said before. Um, there is the gasket system in there. Uh, you have the same T piece. It's identical. The only difference at this end other than that is right here you have a one inch electrical conduit. This is what this is. Uh, female adapter and the male is up inside the male I took it looks similar to this I drilled holes right at the base so this drains right at the base because the male adapter sits about that high well right below this sits about that high in the system um, I drilled a series of four holes I think uh, 3 8 inch around it so it could drain and that adapter comes down to the drain system here now this uh, drain that's up in there if I switched out this adapter for an adapter that doesn't have holes in it in here this would become almost like a deep water culture and aeroponic because this would flood about a third of the way constantly now I could do that I don't think I'm gonna need to do that but it is an option some guys like to run it like a NFT or a deep water culture as they run the aeroponics and if I were to run this as a deep water culture I would simply remove this 90 here that comes down and I would run the sprinkler heads up at the top so they would not be buried under water and they would spray and you would have the deep water culture by just changing out. 
Inside here, you got an O-ring, which is another shower O-ring. Hand tight. Everything here comes apart by hand, other than like this plumbing here. Now this plumbing here is all glued, but I have unions, so I could break the system down. So basically, each rail is plumbed half inch to a valve. I could shut off this valve, it'll shut off just this rail and expose it and take care of the problem. So that's the basic quick video on the rail. Um, I am going to do further videos on other parts of the system, but right now, that's just the basics of the rail. Uh, if guys have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer uh, about construction on it, uh, maybe some costs. Um, I think the little end gaskets, they're a little expensive. They're like three bucks a gasket and you got to cut them down. You know, so if you go down six rails, you got 20, you probably got, what, $36 for the gaskets alone. But for me, 36 bucks to be able to totally clean out this system, open the ends, and have it waterproofed is well worth it to me. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. So I hope everyone's having a great hydro grow. Um, once again, there's the rail systems. There's a quick uh, peek of the plants, how they're doing. I've already started pollinating some flowers. I'm going to be quickly switching soon to a high-pressure sodium bulb and uh, doing some cow mag and boosting the bloom cycle or the bloom newts and stuff. So it's a quick video of the series, video number one. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on this series. This is uh, the rails for the hydroponic uh, rail system for the peppers. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks, and I'll catch you next time.